Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. welcome to another episode of the Weekly Controversies. I am once again the host, the golden one, Rob Gold. Joining me again, as always, is my beautiful and gorgeous co-host, Jay O'Brien. Jay, welcome to another episode. Jesus, you're calling me gorgeous. Thanks very much for the compliment, but I'm sorry, Rob, it all swing that way, mate. Oh, that's all right. Listen, I know you might have daddy on your top, but you're not you're not no daddy of mine. No, no way. <laughs> well yeah, thanks for the intro, Rob, and uh, it's good being back. It's always it's always good to have us here. So people, as we know, SummerSlam is fast approaching, and that is why we are here tonight. And what a start card we are, are approaching to to see for SummerSlam. Joe, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, seven matches that's confirmed from as we are recording. And it does look like a stacked card, like literally everything that's been built in the last couple of months from January to even around Money in the Bank time. You know, literally everything here is just something to look forward to. Every wrestler fan to look forward to. And uh, yeah, this is the episode where we're going to get into all the matches. Indeed, we are. So, Joe, kick us off with the first match that we are going to be talking about yeah I think the fourth match I think is a great way to start is for the women's world championship it is Liv Morgan versus Rhea Ripley and uh, I think as everyone knows this was a big missed opportunity to not have the match be the custody of Dominic match because yeah this is literally being Dominic Mysterio in the middle of these two women who are fighting for the championship but they're also fighting for, you know, Dirty Dom. Because we don't know. Yes, he, he has aligned himself again with Mommy, but could he turn and go with Liv Morgan? What do you, re- what do you reckon, Rob? See, that, that, that is the question on everyone's lips right now. It's, it's a really hard one to sort of digest in a sense because he's been with, you know, as I say, with Rhea for so long and that, and obviously with Rhea being away for a couple of months and that and then coming back you know it seems almost everything's kind of back to normal but you just never know you just never know what could happen you know you really no. don't and and that's what is nice to see about these types of things now as well like you know you know could we see a dom switch where he does go and uh, screw real of the title and that you know you just, yeah and in think in think of it as well though, like in terms of the build for this match, yes, Dom has been quite kind of the big part of this, you know, what we got to do with Liv and Rhea Ripley. But it also goes back to when Rhea turned on Liv after WrestleMania thirty eight, I believe, when they had that tag team match and she turned on her. And that's when she then aligned herself with the Judgment Day. So this has been kind of a two years in the making match. And you do, you, you don't know what way they're going to swing with it, you know? Like, it should be a good match too because, you know, these two women have worked before and they haven't disappointed, got to do with the quality of the matches. But, um, yeah, like, I just think with Don though, being, like, in the front of centre of it all, it does make it interesting on will he stick with Mommy and be loyal or will he end up swinging with Liv Morgan and possibly kicking Rhea Ripley out of the judgment day? It's pot- well, uh, it'll be interesting to see. It will, it really will. And I think, you know, as I say, the whole Judgment Day sort of saga thing as well, too. It'll be interesting to see what happens, you know, with that as well. Especially, as I say, you know, does, you know, if Dom and Liv, you know, become forces, bring her into the Judgment Day instead of, instead of Rhea Ripley, what will the other guys think of that as well? You just don't know. You really you don't know. You no, know, you don't know. But, uh, yeah, no, honestly, it is going to be a great match, I think. Um, as I said, these have worked before. So, I, I, do you know what? I, I think I'd go with Liv Morgan. This revenge tour has been great. Everything that she said about taking everything away from Rhea Ripley has been what she has accomplished. She's taken away her championship, has reclaimed it herself. She's taken Dom away for a while. And she might take him again at SummerSlam. She might probably take the Judgment Day and probably be the new leader. Like I think this is going to be a big, big win for Liv Morgan in her world title, um, you know, run because going out and being someone who was a dominant world champion 
will definitely put a statement in her, you know, WWE career. Definitely. And I think, if, like, if I'm being honest, like, I've been a Liv Morgan fan from the start, and I think this is the best version of Liv Morgan that we are seeing by a distance. Like, the yeah. work that are putting in, you know, the sort of the whole, you know, like, you know, giving, you know, letting uh, Judgment Day bring in back the tag team titles for them, you know, making sure, like, you know, that she's taking everything, as you say, away from Rhea Ripley, including Dom and her title. And that, and that I honestly do believe that that Liv will walk away. Mm. I think I think it is going to be a Dominic torn. Yeah, I think so. I think this is just a fill. Oh, it's about to break in her heart and blah, blah, blah. But now this is the perfect opportunity for Dom to torn Andrea and for Liv Morgan to hold on to the title for a little bit longer until Rhea Ripley then eventually wins it back. But yeah, I'd say Liv Morgan to win on Sunday. Yeah, indeed, and I think that you will be Sunday. Right. Sorry, I keep thinking it's a Sunday pay per view. I'm sorry, Saturday. Jesus, that's how you know I'm not used to the Saturday PLEs. <laughs> Don't mistake for that. Sorry about that, people. Wait, wait sorry. We'll, we'll forgive you this time. We'll forgive you this time. But as I say, so yes, so as I say, so we're all in agreement there that Liv Morgan will be walking away, still yeah. women's world champion. So going yeah. into match, and I. If I'm honest, this match to me is probably one of the been one of the biggest build ups it's had, you know, in the, over the couple of months. And it has been so fun to watch this. And I think I you know where you go where I'm going with this. It is the Scottish Warrior against C M Punk. This has as I'm not only that. It's with Seth Rollins as a special guest referee, which throws a spanner into the works even further. What are your mm. thoughts? Yeah. You know, I wasn't expecting you to say this match so early in the episode. I actually thought you were going to leave it so late. I was going to leave it late. But anyway, you've brought it up. And to me, this is my main event. I, I'm going to get onto the main event, you know, later on in the episode. But to me, this has been the main event. This has been a seven-month build from December when Drew McIntyre and CM Punk saw eye to eye for the first time in over 10 years. You know, Drew not wanting CM Punk to sign for Raw because of the past. And, you know, we've seen promos before how CM Punk carried himself in a certain way, how he thought he was the locker room leader and everyone had to look up to him to be, you know, on his level. But Drew McIntyre at the time, he said that he was struggling, you know, in his personal life, in his wrestling life, everything. He wasn't in the right state of mind and CM Punk didn't make it any better. And I love how personal this rivalry has gotten. And as well with Seth Rollins in the mix, you know, makes it even better. And I always go back to um the promo on Raw with CM Punk, Rollins and McIntyre because they all done hit runs, like all home runs even. Like everyone in that promo was amazing. And it just it has been. It's been one of the best teams in pro wrestling at the moment, you know, between, you know, Drew McIntyre screwing CM Punk's you know, WrestleMania match and injuring up. Then you had Punk screwing Drew McIntyre for the world title and Damian Priest cashing in. Then you also had, you know, Drew McIntyre just taunting at CM Punk literally every give and take. He's taunting him and it's getting under his skin. CM Punk then is just costing him more fucking world titles. You know, it literally has been amazing. And finally, we got on Monday Night Raw last week that CM Punk is cleared and that he's going to face Drew McIntyre. But what makes the match even more interesting is that Seth Rollins is going to be the special guest referee because we know that CM Punk also screwed Seth Rollins out of the world title. And you could have looked at that and went, oh, he could have won the world title. And we know about you know, the end of that match and the referee. And that's what Rollins said. It was a mistake. But what's Rollins' mindset going to be like? You know, that's another person we also have to think about in this match is Seth Rollins. He is going to be the one who will have to count a tree to either of these guys. And it's going to be a controversial take, but I think he's going to count the tree 
to Drew McIntyre. I just don't think I can see Seth Rollins giving CM Punk a win. If there's any give and take for Rollins to screw up over CM Punk, it would be in this match. But a simple fact, you look at like Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre, there is a bit of respect there. You see Seth Rollins go up to Drew McIntyre and say, you deserve to be world champion. So you can see, even though both guys don't like each other that much, there is respect because both of them put in the craft every single week. But with CM Punk, both of them guys hate CM Punk. They can't stand them. They can't stand what he believes in. And then in every give and take, CM Punk could screw both of them. So it wouldn't surprise me if Sam Rollins could screw CM Punk and give Drew McIntyre the win. Indeed, I do believe. And I do believe that Drew McIntyre will be the one that walks away the winner in this match. And if I'm honest, I think the fans are the ones who are going to be walking away with the winners in this match. Yeah, because absolutely. I'm... I just want an amazing fight it's not even like you can have a wrestling match but if it's a brawl if it's a fight if it's intense if it's exciting that's what i love as well in in you know professor wrestling and if they can give us that man oh we are in for a treat and especially like as you say with you know obviously with seth Rollins, especially guest referee he'll take no nonsense you know he'll call it down the middle more or less um and that but i think he will be counting the shoulder to see him punk and drew mcintyre will walk away but that just won't be the end of the feud I do believe that that will continue because you're going to have Seth Rollins into the mix of the feud between the three, between the two of them as well, which will make things, yeah. I think, leading into the rest of this year as well. Oh, of course, yeah. Like I think with Rollins, I think it's suitable for him to be in this now than in you know later in the Royal Reef because we know this is not going to be the first time we're going to see Punk and Drew McIntyre this year in a match. It's also going to build upon you know, what's going to happen in the SummerSlam and then leading up to Bad Blood and, you know, bashing to Berlin. Like, I feel like they're also going to be plotting the seeds for next year as well for eventually when CM Punk faces Rollins then at possibly WrestleMania. So it would make a lot of sense that if it was set Rollins to screw CM Punk out of this match and have some sort of stakes towards that Rollins should not go near it. It wouldn't surprise me either if the did torn on not torn on Rollins, but he made Rollins torn, you know, as a heel again and went down that persona of being a bad guy, but not really a bad guy where you know he's gonna go out there and call the fans this down your eye. He's just a guy who will do whatever it takes for not only do we to be a better place, but for the fans. But he's just gonna do it to a guy who is loved by the fans. So it it is. It's it's making me excited. There's a reason why I have in the background. Like I mean, it's gonna be my main event. You know, even though we are gonna get into the main event for SummerSlam. Sorry, it's gonna say WrestleMania for SummerSlam later in this episode. Man, just ding 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 for this match. Just get it done. Let's go. Yeah, oh hell yeah, hell yeah. And I say so you heard you heard it here first, folks. WrestleMania is this is in two weeks' time. Uh but before... <laughs> no, I, I'm still I'm still WrestleMania on the brain even a couple of months later. <laughs> but Thanks. moving on to Well Rob, the... not Rob. I was gonna say, what is your take on this match? Do you think Drew's gonna I... win? Do you think it's gonna be shenanigans? I think there will be there's, there's, there'll definitely be some shenanigans going on, that's for sure. But I do think, you know, as I say, Drew McIntyre will be the one that walks away with the win. Um, do I think it's going to be Seth Rollins? I, I honestly believe Seth Rollins will toss CM Punk the match, not not only just by counting one, two, three, but I do believe he'll start off fair. He might, you know, hit the two of them with with something and you know, during the match as well to make it look as if he's calling it fair. Then towards the end of the match. You know, he takes a bump from Punk and then the next thing he knocks Punk and then all of a sudden, Drew McIntyre does as usual, kick the kick to the face of Punk, one, two, three. McIntyre walks away with the win and it's a, and he's and he's British because he walks away with the win. He's not Scottish because he didn't lose. So No. <laughs> exactly right, exactly right. But I'm hoping to Mark and Aaron Proud picking Drew McIntyre <laughs> as I am so obviously a punk fan, you know, I would like to see Punk win. But I mean, I don't really hate Drew McIntyre. I like Drew McIntyre, I love what he's been doing. So I mean, either of these guys winning is a bonus, you know. It's just I hope it's just a brilliant wrestling match, but we'll continue on. Um yeah. so looking onto my phone, as I always do, the next match I'm gonna cover is a match that out of the matches on this list, it hasn't really gotten much coverage because it's been kind of a slow build, but we also know there could be a possible 
money cash in. And that is Bailey versus Nia Jax for the WWE Women's Championship. But that's not what's interesting to me. What's interesting to me, Rob, is Tiffany Stratton going to do it? Is Tiffany Toyon going to happen at SummerSlam? Because if you ask me, I think, I, I, I know, I was mad saying it a couple of months ago, but I don't look stupid. I feel like Tiffany Stratton should have won a backlash. She was ready when she got called up to the main roster. She was ready to be champion. Bailey won, but Bailey's championship reign has been born as as expected. It has not been good. I have not been entertained by anything Bailey's done with that world ter- uh, that women's championship. She has literally not even elevated it. She's done nothing with it. She's not really that elevated as a baby face. If you ask me, it's her heels that she's been facing with the likes of the Nia Jax and the Tiffany Strands to me is what's interesting about this. And I know me saying Nia Jax is interesting. That's never something I'd ever say, but it's true. And I mean, that's why I feel like because I'm not really the biggest fan of Nia Jax and Bailey's baby face run with the championship is boring. Tiffany has to win. She has to go and cash in this money to bank because we need to have a in, an interest in women's division in SmackDown. Like, there hasn't been an exciting other than Tiffany winning the money to bank. It just has to happen, Rob. It, it does. I mean, and I think I think we all be, we all know, everyone knows and everyone's believing the fact in Tiffany time. And, that, and it's starting to see around the crowd she's starting to get fans behind her as well even though yeah. the heel they're starting to get really? back, which is interesting as well so could there possibly be you know a change in her sort of ways going forward possibly whenever she becomes the new women's champion and I do believe that that will happen Um, I do believe that Nia Jax will also be champion the same night I think it'll be a cash in mm-hmm. on Nia Jax um and th- that on uh by uh our, by our Tiffy and I do believe that Tiffy will be the one that walks away, and it'll start something. Like that. You know what, Rob? I I think Bailey's gonna win because it would make more sense for Bailey to win for then Tiffany to cash in because if Noya was to take everything, you know, like to Bailey and Bailey comes out on top and she is broke broken, she's battered. Everything that Bailey is in that match, you know, she can't walk, she can't even talk, and then that's a perfect opportunity for the cash in. You know, we've seen it before. You know, oh, yeah. when someone can't be, even walk, you know, that's the perfect time to go and cash in and take that belt away from them. And not only that, it also sets up then an exciting rivalry between Bailey and Tiffany Stratton because it then makes like the matches also good because I wouldn't sit there and watch three. Bailey versus Nia Jack matches, but it would be Tiffany Stratton because I'd say them two would have amazing chemistry in the ring. Because no denying that Bailey's character has been great, but she's great in the ring, and there's no doubt that in a Bailey versus Tiffany Stratton match would be great to watch. It, it would be, you know, as I don't get me wrong, I think it would be a good match to watch as well. And like you know, in the fans, I think I honestly do believe the fans would be actually very split in a sense as well if that was the case mm, because. True, yeah. You think of all the fans that you know and say you know they've been chanting for Bailey and all the ones that are getting behind Tiffy as well, and that whereas the fans aren't really too behind Nia Jax to a point, but understand Nia Jax is Nia Jax. Do you know what I mean? And she, you know, had probably one of the best runs in her career in the WWE at the moment, and that that's one of the reasons why I believe that it's her time to have won the championship, you know, from Bailey. But at the same time, I can understand the whole cash in, obviously, by Tiffy on. Uh, Bailey, because and it would make a lot more sense, and the fact that it would be a, a lot easier for her to take it off her than it would be, you know, someone like Nia Jax straight away. Mm-hmm. You know, so I do, oh, yeah, believe, you know, but but one way or the other, I think we are we're all we are in agreement the fact that Tiffany's going to be walking out as champion. I hope so. I hope Triple H has listened to the fans and is going to do it. Honestly, should she should have won it right at Backlash, but I didn't mind. Holding in the money in the bank and all you know, cashing in on Saturday. See, I'm gonna gonna get it right this time. Not Sunday, it's Saturday. Tiffy time is gonna happen. So, Rob, what's the next match you want to cover? The next match. Now, this is. I was going. I was going to leave this a wee bit. Sort of. Well, we'll not say later. Like, but it probably would have been the next match on the you know on the build up anyway. But this match is for the Enter 
Continental Championship. Sami Zayn against Braun Breaker, the Speed Freak Machine. Oh yeah, so this is the rematch of Money in the Bank. Um, you know what? It's it's funny to me that this is happening again, and there's no multi man match for this because easily you could have this be a triple threat, fatal four way. You know, because it would have made like don't get me wrong, the Money in the Bank match was a very good match. There's no denying that. And like Sammy winning, yeah, I mean, it, it didn't damage Braun Breaker that much, but I mean, for the fit for the fact that Braun Breaker did not win and we're having this match and then Braun Breaker could win, I mean, I think they could have had this match, you know, be done at Money the Bank. Honestly, I think they could have just done that Money the Bank made Braun Breaker the winner and then that was that. But they didn't. They went with Sami Zayn and then we're having the rematch. And I think just be because of that, I just think they should have just done a multi man match. I think they should have added in a dragon off and even a Sheamus there because Sheamus mm-hmm. still wants to be the OEC champion. We know that that's the one title he's never won. Dragon off, we know he can compete in any match and look amazing. Um big missed opportunity, but if we're gonna cover about this match Braun's gonna win. I cannot, I cannot see Braun losing again because if Braun was to lose against Sami Zayn again, I just think then it just looks really bad then on Triple H's bookings on Sami Zayn because yeah, Sami Zayn's win against Gunther was amazing. The whole Rocky story and being the underdog and there's only so much you can take after that. And if if he goes and beats Braun Breaker with this underdog mentality again. I think the fans are really, really going to turn on Sami Zayn very quick and they're going to be wanting a new champion. So if it's going to be the time to turn Braun Breaker champion, it's going to be now. Yeah, definitely. And I think, like, I, I am in agreement with you there. They should have done this at Money in the Bank. Now, I have to know this. Yeah. I can understand why they didn't because obviously it was, it was in Sami Zayn territory. And I so I can understand that. But at the same time, it's like, I mean, how many times have they done that before with title changes? You know, for you know, for people who've been you know in their own home state and things like that, so to have this match, it doesn't make sense to the point of the fact that it's pretty much set up for Braun Breaker to win the match. Yeah, there's no denying that. I mean, if you, I mean, if you went into this match thinking Sami Zayn was going to actually walk out as champion, you'd be a fool because there's no way. I mean, why would they set that match straight up just after a couple of weeks after Money in the Bank? It just doesn't make sense. There's no. no- they know what the fans want. They know the one Braun Breaker is Intercontinental Champion. They know how good he is. They know how good he was as NXT Champion. They know how good how good he will be as an Intercontinental Champion, and it will make and he will give good matches as well. And you know, you mm. so it's not just going to be an, an underdog story with him. You know, you're going to have different yeah. champions facing him. You know, you're going to have possibly like a dragon off against him for the for the belt. You know, and as I say, it'd be nice to see you know that match again as well. And you know, so you're gonna have you're just gonna have a, a cluster of matches that you know Braun Baker will, you know, will sell, it'll make like yeah. Us. No, but what I was gonna say to you though, Rob, as well, is that like you looked at when Braun Baker first went up to the main roster and was drafted to Raw, you know, because he wasn't really doing much on SmackDown. He got drafted to Raw, and he wasn't in the King of the Ring, and he was getting screwed really by Adam Pearce because he wasn't getting the opportunities. I think for that. Stupid little storyline they should have continued with, with Sami Zayn. And I think they should have had Sami win. I understand that, the whole Toronto, blah, 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 but not clear. I think that's the biggest thing that took me away to this match being announced is that Sami Zayn bet him clean at Money in the Bank. And I'm not saying that it's going to damage Braun Breaker at all. Braun Breaker is going to be a superstar in the next couple of years. He's going to be one of the faces of this company when everyone retires. But for now, it's the fact that because he got beaten clean by Sami Zayn and he haven't built upon that other than just, all right, you're just going to be given another match anyway, will make the Intercontinental Championship win that more kind of clusterfuck, if if you want to say. It's going to be amazing, but it would have been even sweeter on Money the Bank, you know, beating him in his hometown and stuff like that. But if they would have had Braun Breaker be screwed out of the win, at Money in the Bank, and then Sami Zayn would win, then I'd understand the build up to the rematch. But because they didn't go that route, I'm just not really that much excited about the second match. Because if, if the money... Match, for you example, have to build a storyline, sorry Rob, you have to build a storyline upon oh. Like You look at what we're looking at now, 
in in SummerSlam and you look at the storylines that they with this, to me, this is what I've seen before. This is just a guy getting a rematch, even though he doesn't deserve a rematch. Yeah, because, I mean, he lost the match, so why is he getting a rematch if he's lost yeah, the match? Yeah, you know what I mean? He didn't get screwed. It's not like it was a referee fuck up or Sammy saying cheated. It was just he bet him clean and that was it. But, yeah, he's getting another match. So, it's like, mm, it just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, and like the thing about it was, like, had that match at Money in the Bank finished, like, say, like a disqualification in favor of, say, like, even or even a, even a double count out where both of them are counted at the same time, and the fact that then you could understand the rematch for that, you know, to see who's a better man and all that, you could understand that. But mm. the, the way it's been done, it's just it just doesn't really make sense. But either way, like, you know, it's, it'll still be nice to say for Braun Breaker to say as things go according to plan that he will be being the Intercontinental Champion. Coming under SummerSlam, yeah, uh, it's going to be amazing what he's going to do with that for the next couple of weeks. You know, like because that's going to be definitely one of the most exciting title events. You know, when it does happen, as Braun Breaker is IC champion, because we're going to have dream matches, and then you never know. Could we see even Sheamus and Braun Breaker have a rivalry coming up to WrestleMania? We don't know. That's what makes Braun Breaker being IC champion exciting. But I just think that it should have happened at Money in the Bank. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Right, so you covered that match, and I think the next match is pretty fitting to cover next is for the United States Championship, and it is Logan Paul versus L.A. Knight. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Um, so this is a match I've been wanting for fucking months, and I wanted it for WrestleMania, but we're getting that SummerSlam, and I am looking forward to L.A. Knight finally winning his four singles title in WWE. Logan Paul has been a great champion. I don't care what anyone says. He has been a great champion for what he has done. You know, he has elevated that title to his own level to where he's getting attention. And yes, he hasn't wrestled that many matches for it, but he's gotten attention because of who he is, because he's a social media star and stuff. But with LA Knight being the mega star and being one of the most popular wrestlers in all of WWE, for him to get his moment at SummerSlam to finally win his fourth WWE's fucking you know, singles title is going to be amazing. Yeah, I mean, like you, you can imagine the pop that that, that the arena will feel, you know, and that you know come oh, yeah. you know come Saturday night. Do you know what I mean? It's like it'll be it'll be next level. It'll be like it'll be like the fans whenever well it'll be like half of the fans whenever Cody Rhodes won at WrestleMania. It'll be like almost that atmosphere, you know, for LA night. You know, the emotion, you know, from from every fan that supported LA night from up, seeing how he's become. The mega star, you know, over the over the last year and that, and seeing how popular that you know that run will be, and that as well going forward will be will be something else to to be hold off. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and you know, because he even though it's Cleveland, he's still going to get booed out of the whole stadium, Logan Paul, because he's not liked, and that's what makes his heel character so good, is that he's not liked. He's arrogant. He thinks he's better than everyone else. But I mean, when you look at him in the ring, you kind of go, "There's a reason why he is like that." But um, I mean, I have had hope that he would go full-time but he isn't he's still part-time which most likely will be in this next deal as well and uh i mean look listen it's going to come to an end i mean i'd be shocked if it isn't i mean i'm, I'm gonna say here now if logan paul beat la night i will get a logan paul tattoo that's how confident i am of la night when you can anyone that's clipped anyone guys anyone who's watching this clip it because if logan paul does win i will get a tattoo I don't there's I just don't see it happening. I just don't, but like uh yeah, LA Knight all the way. Yeah, d- d- yeah. <laughs> what have I done, Rob? What have I done? <laughs> He's just wrestling like in uh, tattoo to side there for that. Um, let's get one, let's get one of them wrestling tattoos. Remember years ago the wrestling tattoos on your arms and all and you wore it down. get one of the logo ones to pretend it's uh, a real one. Back back in the back in the day. <laughs> Jellies and stuff, and you had the tattoo. Type yeah, of thing. yeah. <laughs> Love that. Oh, they were like, the days, man. Like the ice cream bars, bring the ice cream bars back. I I agree with with Phil Brooks there with that. Bring the the, the ice cream bars back for that. Fucking thirteen years later, and still haven't brought them back. But um, yeah, we're got we're sorry, we're going off topic. <laughs> yeah, so back on back on track with uh, if I'm honest, what's going to be. Still, I would say still it's been a really, really good match, and it is for the world heavyweight championship. It is the King General Gunter. Oh, yeah. No, you're forgetting the King General. 
That's what I said, King. Did you say, say, say King? I thought you said Ring. No, no, I was like, I was like, the King. Name the iPhone for the audio, it's shy. <laughs> the King General Gunta versus the World Heavyweight Champion Damian Priest. And what's shaping up, I think, to be one of the best matches of the night. I'm not going to lie. Okay, Rob. Yeah, I think I do. I do think there's another match that's, better, that's going to be that will top it. But I think this will be one of the best matches of the night because even though we are expecting Gunther to take this title away from Damian Priest, I do think this match, as I say, will be physical, will be tough on both, and I do think Priest will give as good as he'll get. Um, but I do think, as I say, I honestly believe that Gunther will be the one to walk away with the new as a new world heavyweight champion as well as being the king. So he'll be the, the world heavyweight general champion. Yeah. And it, do you know what, though? It is going to be a really hard-hitting match because you know how Damien Priest can be in the ring and he can be hard-hitting. He can take hits. You know, he can literally give it back. You know, and then you know what that way he is. He's a tough motherfucker. One of the toughest motherfuckers in all of WWE. My man... Literally, I wouldn't want to get a chop off that fella, even if you pay me. But um, yeah, it is. It's going to be a very hard hitting match. Um, I mean, what they've done the last couple of weeks with you know bringing up about Damian Priest's you know fucking story of being homeless and the family and everything like that has literally touched the nerve on Damian. And you can even see as well they are leaning him to be a baby face. And I mean. All the fans are back in it. I mean, the fans are back in Damian Priest as champion. Everyone that's saying that it's been a bad championship reign, I mean, it hasn't been that bad. I think it's been probably one of the best ones. I think, in a way, it's probably been better than even Cody's. And that's a big Cody fan saying that. Honestly, I just think the way they've done the world title run for Damian Priest has been impressive for a champion who shouldn't even be in that champion to a lot of people's eyes when he cashed in at, you know, Drew McIntyre. But Triple H believes in Damian Priest. Uh, no, no, Joe Hendry, no, Joe Hendry. Um, <laughs> as you hear, <laughs> but um, <laughs> but in fairness, he does believe that Damian Priest is a worthy world champion. Is actually is like actually a world champion that everyone can get behind, and you can notice that in the crowd reactions, a lot of people are getting behind Damian Priest. Oh, oh, big time, and you and you can see that even even in the backstage segments and stuff that he does, even you know whatever, even even with Jay with faces. You know the main sort of things, and he's like kind of like supposed to be in like this heel grip, and he's sort of like you know even joking about with you know with the Eat Master himself, like eating away like you know backstage. You know what I mean? So, uh, but it's nice to see that at the same time too, because it's seeing that type of a character that Damian Priest can be. You know, he doesn't have to be this you know big sort of heel monster kind of character. He can be mm. be more himself. Be be you know be this new version of Damian Priest because. I think this new Damien Priest could be a good a good face character to have, you know, around. Yeah, of course, yeah. And he is going to be used more, you know, in the top um, program and Raw, do you know what I mean? He is definitely going to be a guy who Triple H, even though he might not be World Champion coming out of SummerSlam, he's definitely going to be in the big program. And even if there's rumours going around that in the next couple of months, he's going to get kicked out of Judgment Day. You know, you know that he's going to be in good hands either way with the way he's being booked and him turning babyface. It won't be even a bad thing for Damian Priest. It might be a good thing, you know. And we've seen what he even did at NXT, you know, with the whole Archer gimmick and stuff. They could definitely bring that all back and then he can definitely be, you know, a proper badass. Oh, yeah, def- definitely. And like, I think what, like, that's a thing a lot of people sort of forget the fact that he's came through NXT and that and he's been. You know, as I say, that he's been there ever since. You know, coming up through through that, and then obviously he's straight, straight into raw. And he, he obviously, yes, he may have got mixed mixed up a bit. You know, with you know the way things have been going, and that, and then but once you got the mix of Finn himself, Don, Rhea, you know, and now JD, the fact that you know, as I say, it's it's how it's just grown stronger and stronger, and seeing that. You know, you can see the fact that that group's gel so well, and that's why this works so well. But it because of the characters that they've got in that group, and if you take mm-hmm. like that, you know, I mean, uh, and the thing about it is, too, even if you take him out of that, he won't get lost now because of the character he is now compared to what he was mm-hmm. at the early stages of his raw career. Mm-hmm. 
No, absolutely. And I think anyone who thinks that the judgment day is going to interfere in this match, no, there's no judgment day that's going to interfere in any match. Like, I think that's going to be something that they're going to do later in the year. And I think that if if Gunther was to win the world title, I'd say himself he would want to win it properly. He wouldn't want to win with interference and everything. You know, no Imperium, no Luke McCoyser, he would want to win it because he is the King General. And he would even want to win it and show people why he is one of the most dominant professional wrestlers in the world. Not even a WWE, just in the world. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's the like that's the thing with Gunther too. Like we know how good Gunther is. Do you know oh, what I mean? Absolutely. You know, before and like as I say, like I mean, like I always refer we always like us fans say, especially our fans, we've always revert to the Jordan Devil match against Walter, you know, sort of at OTT. You, you know the you know for WWE fans would have remembered more so Gunther against Sheamus from Clash at the Castle, mm-hmm. like proper proper fight, and that and you you've seen the scars from both of them after that match, like, and this is going to be mm-hmm. up there with them. Yeah, definitely. Like you can see them matches being revisited again as well with Gunther being champion, even with Drew. Even if Drew wanted to be in the world title picture again after Punkin' all is all done, you could definitely see Drew and Gunther having brilliant matches again for the world title as well. And then you have Sheamus as well, who wants to be world champion again. Everything like that is exciting for Gunther being champion because of the matches and stuff and what they're going to possibly build for, you know, coming up to the Royal Rumble or even WrestleMania next year. You know, it is. That's what makes Gunther being world champion that exciting is because of not only him being a dominant champion and just elevating that championship to the next level, but with the potential opponents he's going to have. Like, oh my God. And and that's and that's just gonna be it too. It's like it's like, you know, you know, we we'll, we'll talk about Braun Breaker, you know, what challenges in challenges he can have, but you know, you forget to think like Bagginal against Gunther and things like that as well. So you can see sort of that kind of happening, you know, later on as well, too as well, because we've seen those matches from NXT UK and that as well, and they put on a classic Oh fuck me, man. Even NXT takeover when he actually dethroned them as the UK Champion man, oh my god, man! Some of them matches were fucking amazing. Like, oh, and the thing that they'll revisit that as well when he becomes world champion is just because see that's what as well. Like people when they uh, they saw Dragon Off Lewis to Jey Uso and was like, oh, that's at the bury them and all that stuff. No, they are just waiting for the perfect opportunity to have Dragon Off and Gunda happen, and they're not going to do it in some stupid TV show for the tournament. No, they're going to have it in a PLE for the world title. And can you imagine how immense that match will be? Oh my god! Like I don't care what that match is, and uh, where you know whether it's you know the set on the for this for the championship, which it will be. Like that will be a classic match again. It really will be yeah. because they know how to go. They know how to go. Yeah. So Paul going down this one. So yeah. we uh, so my thoughts for that one. So I do would say that it will be Gunther, King General, walking out as the new world heavy champion. Yeah. And he's gonna win it clean. No judgment day, I don't think. No interference. He's gonna win it clean. Yeah, exactly. And so and and so is gonna come. They're gonna win it clean with Imperium as well. Without Imperium, I think that's what you meant. Wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's gonna be no judgment day from Damian Priest's side. No Imperium, um, uh, from uh, Gunther's side. It's gonna be a clean fight. Well, cleanish fight with Gunther involved. Um, no, not clean with Gunther. You know that yourself. There's nothing clean with Gunther. No, it's like there's nothing clean, just a few hairs off the chest. That's from the chops, that's for sure. Oh, a few bruises on the chest, a few slaps on the face. Oh, you're gonna get it all coming this Saturday. I'll tell you one thing I said, like, I mean, if, like if I was Ryan Healy, like taking a shot from him or something, I gotta be stupid to say yes to that one. Like, he was stupid enough to say that say yes from, from Red Light, but if he was like, Gunther, it's like, no, no, you're okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, right, we are on to the main event of SummerSlam. It shouldn't be the main event. I I just think the picture behind me should be, but this is the main event, and it is Solo Sokoa, with most likely the bloodline of Jacob Fatu, Tonga Loa, and Tama Tonga, versus the American Nightmare and Undisputed Champion, Cody Rhodes. And 
yeah, as a big Cody Mark, I mean, oh, man, this is going to be a controversial take. But not probably controversial, but I can't believe I'm saying this. But Roman returning, because we all know this is what they're probably going to lead to. They're all probably going to lead to Roman returning. And we don't know if he's going to decide with the bloodline or he's going to take out the bloodline. We don't know. But the truth is, I can't believe that Roman Reigns is the reason why Cody is in the SummerSlam main event. I can't believe it. Cody needs to rely on Roman again to be in the main event of a big pay-per-view. And it's kind of like, it just goes to show, and I will admit, that Cody Rose's world title run has faded a bit. And, I, and I'm and i a big Cody mark. I am. I'll be honest. I won't fuck about. I'm not Tony. I'm not anyone who is fairly, ah, oh, well, this and that and like that. No. I will say it as it is. I'm a big Cody mark. I'm not sitting here saying, oh, I acknowledge my tribal chief. No. I'm a big Cody fan. Him being champion will always be what I've wanted. And it's, it was amazing what happened at WrestleMania. But the last couple of weeks, for the way they've done the new bloodline, and don't don't get me wrong, the new bloodline have been amazing. Bringing in Jacob Fatu, who looks like a fucking monster in that ring. Oh my God, he has literally outshined any member of the new bloodline, even the new leader, Solo Sokoa, who is not getting acknowledged by a lot of the bloodline fans, and probably including yourself, Rob. But I just think, though, with the way they've literally took out all the baby faces, made Cody look weak. He's just it's just not looking good for Cody in the build up to this SummerSlam match, honest to God. And it's the simple fact that because Roman might be returning and you know probably turning on the new bloodline, really makes this match to me very lackluster. Yeah. See and that's that I think it will be lackluster to a point as the fact like we all think that Roman Reigns is going to return, but then to help Cody retain, but only for Roman Reigns to be the one that tries to take the championship back. Mm. But this is where things could get interesting, is the fact that he could actually come up and actually help Solo Sokoa win, only to take it from him and to become the real head of the table. Mm. Yeah. Every- See, like the see the thing is, right? The, the worst thing, see, this is the worst thing they did. I think they didn't give Cody a packed roster for him to go and meet new opponents for them to have a good world title run. They have relied on the bloodline again to make up. And do you know what? I, I can't believe I'm saying this because he's right. Tony saying that the bloodline making Cody relevant is. Probably correct because if he had no bloodline, what will Cody do that would be interesting going into SummerSlam? Because if you ask me, I'm just waiting for for Randy to turn heel on Cody and for Randy Orton and Cody Rose to have you know the rivalry that we've been waiting for since he won the championship. But because we're not getting that yet and we're having the bloodline, it's now the fact of that because the bloodline is you know around and it's the new one and with Roman Reigns coming back, that's the biggest thing going into possibly this pay-per-view is the fact that Roman coming back and the whole Bloodline Civil War happening. Yeah. And it's, and it's the not thing really about, I know. I know. Like, what's going on? You know, it's like... I just don't know. I just like... And it does... It, it, it hurts because, like, I wish that he was the guy... Because he is the guy. He is the face of WWE. We all know that. But to know that you're not the most interesting thing going into the the second biggest pay-per-view of the year is a big, ugh, do you know what I mean? It, it literally is like, man, when you looked at WrestleMania, you looked at The Rock, you looked at Seth Rollins, the tag team match, but like you still had the main event with Cody and stuff like that, and then the whole finish in the story. He was still one of the front and centers of that whole weekend was, you know, was he going to do it even against Bloodline Reels? And, you know, the rest is history. But when you look at the Solo Sokoa match, and you look at what they've done against Cody and against Kevin Owens and Randy Orton, you're going, you're saying to yourself, man, Cody Rose isn't really that interesting. He's not really getting that big, like much of a, how can I put it, built to this, you know, storyline with the new bloodline. But that's just the way I see it anyway. Um, and it's just, it's, it's just quite disappointing. Yeah, because that, that's the thing too, because I mean, 
Like we're all just talking more, talking about the bloodline more than Cody Rhodes, you know. So the bloodline again yeah, is yeah. more interesting thing to talk about again. Which don't get me wrong, is a good thing, but at the same time, it's like, you know, you're going to be getting this probably for quite a long time, not just like this year, next year. You're going to have this on for at least a good more few more years on top of this because you look at the age differences between them all as well, plus the other members of the bloodline that they could bring in. Plus, you've got the return in Jimmy Uso to add on to the mix again as well, which is yeah. another possibly happened too. And again, we all know what happened with Jimmy the last time that he was in the ring with Solo Sokoa. So it'll be interesting to see what goes from there. Does Roman come back on his own? Does Roman come back with someone? Does Roman come back and screw Solo? Does he come back to screw Cody? Again, who knows? And and, and you know what, Rob, as well? I'm fearing the worst for Cody after you know, he loses the belt as well, because this could be even the start to him going down the card. And it, it, all the evidence is there. I think everyone knows, right, with the new Bloodline storyline they're going to be doing, with Roman coming back in the Civil War, with Randy torn in heel, a lot of people then will want Randy to be the you know world champion, and I think he'll be 15-time champion. Am I correct? Then okay. you have John Cena's farewell tour, John Cena versus Randy Orton to make himself 17 time champion. You know, all of these things that are happening as well, The Rock versus Roman Reigns being the night two main event. You look at Cody now, and Cody isn't the main event anymore. And he's eventually going to be down the card slowly but surely coming into WrestleMania 41. And it fucking pains to see because it's like, you know, like when you looked at the documentary with WrestleMania, Cody was never going to be in the main event. He wanted The Rock versus Roman in night two, but because the fans saw him win the Royal Rumble, we all want, we all got what we wanted, and he finished the story. But ever since finishing the story, like what, 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 what's kind of happened? What's really think... happened? Other than, other than probably the bloodline coming in and, you know, aligning with Roman, not Roman, but with Cody again. Oh yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. And 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 the thing about it is too, I mean, I think we all we all kind of guessed that was going to happen after WrestleMania was the fact that like again, like from what I remember, Tony actually said this as well before that that yes, we all know that you know, we all want like most of us wanted Roman Reigns to win it, but Cody, but obviously the Cody fans wanted Cody to win it, but it was the fact that Cody was going to finish his story. But the fact that you also had, you know, the, as I say, all the fans saying, like, you know, oh, if Cody wins, he's not really going to do much with it. And those fans are right. Mm. And, and they're proven right. And like, don't get me wrong. I mean, we know how, you know, much merch that Cody makes, what it good he, good he does with WWE and that as well. But as a champion, you know, it's like, as I said before, his run as champion hasn't been great. But is that in... Is that more so because of the fact he's moved to Sm- from Raw to SmackDown? And that's taken away some of the main eventers from that because there's not too many eventers in SmackDown that really can have been challenging Cody mm-hmm. as well. I mean, you look at Solo Sokoa, do you think that he's main event material? Well, obviously, he's proven it if he's going to be in the main event against Cody. Well, that's the way he's being booked, Rob. Sorry, yeah. but that's the way he's being booked with this new. Bloodlines, you know, and how he's being built as the new tribal chief, and he has a new family behind them, and then also his new enforcer, Jacob Fatu, who, if you ask me, is being the best thing about the new bloodline. But we're not getting into Jacob Fatu at the moment. We are literally talking about how Solo Sokoa is in a world title picture because of what he's been doing. And it's like, man, if this wasn't the bloodline. If this was Randy Orton, I would have easily have understood this being the main event of SummerSlam. But the simple fact is, Solo Sokoa is the main eventer. He's only there because it adds on them, Roman then coming back and possibly turning on him on the new bloodline. That's the only reason why he's there. That's also the reason why Cody Rhodes is even in the main event in the first place. Because if he wasn't, this would easily be in the main event behind me. Because it makes more sense. It's been a build for seven months. You know, It, it should be the SummerSlam main event. But Oh man, I don't know. It's just it's frustrating, and I hate even saying that even a bill, you know, Cody Rolls because you just want to you want to defend him, and I do defend him. You know, he is one of the best wrestlers, one of the best storytellers. Everyone that thinks, oh well, th- this should be the heel torn, then no, listen, he's not gonna torn heel. He doesn't need a heel torn. He just needs to be put 
needs to be booked in a program where he can be interesting. But because there's other things that are more interesting in the lines of creative, it's then putting Cody on the side where he's then not going to be, you know, backed, you know, like by the networks and the fans and stuff. I know he's popular with the fans, but when you don't have the most interesting program, it's very worrying. Yeah, definitely. And then, and and that's the thing, say, because I mean, like whenever you see, I mean, yes, you see Cody Rhodes on the card and you're like, yeah, crown, okay, we see him all the time. That's fine. Who's he got up against? Who's this guy? All right, okay. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, and, and that, that's what it's been like more or less since Cody won the championship. And it does, like, I mean, I agree with you that it does pay me to say that, the fact that like, the run hasn't been a great run. I mean, don't get me wrong, the match against AJ Styles, the backlash was as oh, AJ, amazing. I just think that the fact that they had Logan Paul then after that, then they revisited Suds, and then straight away as soon as Duds were done, they fed him to the bloodline again. It was like, man, these last couple of months haven't been really what I expected them to do. But they were like, right, you got your moment. Right, and this is what we're going to do now. You know what I mean? Now it's like, this is what we're doing. This is what we're planning for then next year's WrestleMania. And we all knew it from when Roman left and then Solis Akawa then took out Paul Heyman and then aligned himself with the new bloodline. We all know where it was going to go. And eventually then it's going to have then The Rock coming back and then it's going to have then The Rock versus Roman Reigns. And that's yeah. the way to it. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's what will happen. And we are still anticipating that moment when The Rock comes back as well because we know that, I say, the night after WrestleMania that The Rock did promise Cody that he was going to be coming back at some point down the line. But we know that it's not going to be at SummerSlam, but we do know because of that. It's going to be else... crazy to think that, right? When Roman comes back, yeah, but it's going to be crazy to think that when Roman comes back, he's going to get a bigger pop and a bigger baby face reaction than Cody. Come on, and he was yeah. a guy who everyone was hating, and then now he's getting literally the biggest fucking pops in any arena. The we want Roman chance are getting louder and louder by the week on SmackDown. Everyone wants Roman back. Like they're, they're was, almost, where was they're that all... seven fucking eight years ago when they all hated the bastard? Like, like, like that's the thing too. Like, I mean, like they're all louder than the actual Cody Cody chance and stuff. Whenever yeah. there. oh no, it's and he's not already... that, that's just that's just what I'm telling you. This is this is just the main event for Roman to come back, and like yeah. when he comes back, I'll be like, I expected that. Everyone's going to be, oh my God, Roman's back. Like, you all expected this bullshit. I expected this bullshit. And now this is going to be the bloodline now, going to be the biggest thing going into the end to next year's WrestleMania. This is what it's going to be. And as a fan of Cody Rhodes, it's going to be quite annoying because, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and lie and say I've been a fan of Roman Reigns since day one. I've never hated Roman Reigns, but he was always someone to me that never... I never got a connection with, not even with like with Cody or even Cena and Stolz and stuff like that, all them kind of guys. But for Roman, yeah, it's like people love him now because he's a heel and everything like that. And now everyone's going to be reacting big when he returns. Yeah. And and that's the thing too, because I mean, like, like I, like to be fair, like now, three in his, in his NXT days, like, I mean, I wasn't too overly, you know, with Roman Reigns and such, but like obviously whenever they were in the Shield and that and stuff, and even when he went solo, <laughs> no pun intended. Um, yeah. But um, I, I still had a, you know, you know, say he's just, he was still one of the guys that I was like looking into, going like, yeah, he he could be good, you know. Obviously that he was pushed more. I I don't blame him for this because at the end of the day he was back then, you know that that guy's push as such, you know, to the main. So, um, and the, and because of that, that's why people didn't take to him because he was being pushed that much. You know, it's the same. It's like it's the same whenever Cena was pushed that much, people were trying to were almost turning on him as well. And he got that same treatment as what Cena done. And the fact he's grown since then, he hasn't needed to say too much. He's had Paul Heyman behind him pretty much since he's went it went heel day one and hasn't looked back since. Yeah. Do, do you know what, Rob, right? Because I know we're getting into the end of the episode, right? And I have to say, this has been a good take into what we're going to be expecting going into SummerSlam. But for me, right, I would love if Roman didn't come back for the simple fact this would be amazing for Orton to come and turn heel. Like, because I think if Orton was to turn heel on this show, 
it will be more of a holy fuck moment than Roman will just coming back and everyone expecting it because it's the fact that they'll then build like Randy versus Cody and then they'll have that rivalry then happening for a couple of months that will lead then into Royal Rumble and I just think for me that will be a more of a holy fuck moment than Roman returning. You know what? Do you know? Do you know what the, you know what the funny thing is? I would actually love it if if, if Roman was going to turn heel. I would love it to do it this way. Hit Roman Reigns' music, then Orton comes through the crowd in a hoodie, comes over the barrier the way that all the Bloodline members of you normally do, mm-hmm. and then if he's going to attack Solo, but then he actually attacks Cody, and yeah. calls Cody the match, and then the next thing reveals himself as Orton. Do you know what? If we're, if we're going to be plotting this, right, I think this would be unbelievable, right? If, <laughs> if like, he literally was to come down and help, you know, Cody and then Cody was to win against the Bloodline and then it literally ends with him just raising his hand and then an RKO out of nowhere and then it ends with Randy Orton standing tall against Cody Rhodes and holds up the Undisputed title. Now, that, to me, would be fucking yes. It'd be like, right, yes, Cody won, but we know then we're getting Randy torn in heel and we're going to get Randy versus Cody. Then that, to me, then would be like, right, Cody now has gotten interesting. Cody's program with Randy is going to be one of the most interesting things. He's getting away from the bloodline once and for all and now he's going to be focused then on Randy. That's just what I think would be more amazing. But yeah. listen, I don't I don't book, I don't write, I'm just a fucking mark. <laughs> See him? Uh, yeah. Well, right, sometimes like, but that's uh, doesn't matter. But Literally. I do. I do think that could be a good way to look at it and to, and, and to book it as well because then it takes away, like, because you think about it, like, I mean, the Bloodline story doesn't even need to have a championship at the moment involved with, whereas no. you, you look at Cody, you look at Randy, you go, there's a championship match right there. You throw yeah. Roman, you know, you, you maybe, you know, okay, don't use him for some or something, bring him in, say, maybe in, in the next one, build up towards Survivor Series, you know, if you've got war games happening again, then you've got your Civil War match and war games. Yeah, and it, it, even then as well, you don't even need Roman to come back at SummerSlam. Roman can come back on a SmackDown. Like, yes, he is one of the biggest things in WWE, but he doesn't need to have a whole main event for him to return. He can literally turn up when Paul Heyman comes back. Kind of like of a, um, if you remember when Paul Heyman came back against CM Punk and he brought back Brock Lesnar, kind of along, along the lines of that, if it's a fact of, oh, Paul Heyman comes back, then Roman Reigns comes back, then that will make a lot more of a holy fuck moment, you know what I mean? It would be an amazing moment, you know? But interfering in a match and stuff like that, and that being the sole purpose of it being the main event, I just don't like the idea. Yeah. Well, it will be interesting to see, you know, what does, you know, happen, you know, as whenever SummerSlam does air from Cleveland, um, and that in a couple of weeks' time. I'm sorry, well, actually, whenever this airs, it'll actually be that It'll be Saturday. this Saturday from when this airs. So this Saturday, SummerSlam, 1 a.m., Ireland and UK time. It's going to be a good pay-per-view. It's, it really is, and I'm looking forward to it. Really looking forward to it. Well, this has been another another excellent episode of the Weekly Controversies. Joe, do you want to do it, or do you want me to take things? Um, oh, no, I'll let you do the outro, but I'm just going to say to the people who are watching, um, if you have any predictions, any of your, you know, takes on SummerSlam, comment on below. We're going to be on uh, the Instagram as well, coming up to, you know, SummerSlam, and we're going to also do sort of use our takes as well, use our little opinions, everything got to do with SummerSlam. And not only that, I'm announcing as well that we are going to be doing an episode with Big Boots Murphy. We are going to be doing a controversial episode, kind of a debate episode, and I'm looking forward to doing it. Yeah, big, big time. Big Boots Murphy indeed. Can't wait for to have him, him on and have see what he has to say as well. And folks, I say this has been another weekly controversies episode. And to check us out, if you go on to the Five Marks YouTube channel as and wherever you get your podcast, 6 p.m. GMT every Monday evening. I have been Rob Gold. This has been Jay O'Brien. And like Dom and Ray's relationship, we are over. <laughs> <laughs>